Bike seems to be back to normal. There's no more error on the screen. A squirrel. Squirrel. <laughs> what are the odds of that? Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Check it out. It's the 10 Ways e-bike. And today we're gonna do a review, full review on this guy. This one should be more of a city bike, not really any suspension on it or anything, but if you don't need suspension and you're just kind of doing like not really any off-road stuff, uh, this may be the one you want to check out for like city commuting and stuff like that. So anyway, we're gonna do a full review on this, unbox it, put it together, get some like chase drone video and really just give you my first-hand experience on how this thing really works. I like to just wear gloves just to make sure you're not um, accidentally cutting yourself. Also, it's got these little nails, little metal nails that could catch your fingers. You want to be careful with this stuff. My son and I were breaking down cardboard and I just like slid it on my finger and sure enough, I got like a paper cut from cardboard. I don't know if anybody's ever done that before. First layer, we got a little, looks like accessory box. Manual, looks like we got a light. Uh, power cords, the charger should be in here somewhere. Looks like it's a double layer box. Couple of tools, pedals, and charger. Oh, this looks like a little tire pump. That's cool. Cool, so that's the accessory box. We'll break into that a little bit more when we um, kind of move along. We also got a seat on this top level. There's our seat. And it's got adjustments, markings right there. You know, it feels like a pretty sporty seat. I'm not sure how comfortable this is gonna be, but anyway, that's the seat. Now we just gotta take out all these foam things, of course. Wow, covered with a big piece of plastic. Fenders. If we wanna put fenders on it, we can. Not a fat tire bike, okay guys? That just felt like about Geez, 30 pounds, 20 pounds. Now we're just being careful not to cut anything and take off all these tie wraps. And uh, cardboard and foam things. Nice black powder coating with the green accents on it. to be careful taking this off. Don't want to scratch those handlebars. Battery in the frame. Lots of tie wraps. Front tire stuck with the pedal. Brake on the front tire. Oh, more tire wraps. Ah. No harm in packaging well. X spark brakes. Okay. Headlight. Front forks. Anyway, guys, that's the bike with all the packaging off. Ooh, it's belt drive. All right, so that is it for unpacking. I want to say that took about, I want to say about 10 minutes, maybe five to 10 if you're really doing it fast. But anyway, there is the bike all unpackaged. Now all we got to do guys is grab these parts here. Now let's put all this stuff together. They have two models. This is the lower end model, a little bit cheaper. This little guy here is the rear light. So we will put that on. Uh, looks like it's just kind of clip on standalone. I'll give you a little charger. You know, looks like the charge port's gonna be right here on the back. So a little bit, little tiny USB-D old style charge port and a little rubber band to clip that on the back as well. Let's see if we click and hold it. If we get any strobing or anything. Nope, no strobing or anything guys, just off and on. An Allen wrench, two sizes, large and small. A wrench, 10 millimeter. Close and open end little wrench, our power adapter, a larger wrench, which is a 15 millimeter, little kind of rudimentary bike pump with a cap, a couple of screws, maybe for a water bottle. And then there looks like a ball attachment if you want to pump up, you know, like basketballs and stuff. We got two pedals 
in plastic wrap here. This is gonna be like our power brick wall charger. And let's pull this out, just see how it looks real quick. Okay, so we have like a foreign adapter. And luckily I got a US adapter in the box. So you have these two plug types. Not gonna be using that one. I'm gonna be using this one that plugs right into the little figure eight power brick. So the right side is regular threaded. Grab our larger wrench. Give that a little crank, not much. Turn this bike around. Anyway, uh, left pedal. Now let's see if this one is gonna tighten. Yeah, so this is reverse thread. You would think that there'd be a kickstand for like a city bike in the box, right? Seat, pretty self-explanatory. Just your basic slide down, slide in seat. Clamp that down. That's a little too tight on the thumb screw. There we go. I kind of just wanted to double check this accessory box. Make sure I wasn't uh, missing the kickstand. Nope. Hmm. Okay, so the head right here looks like it's pretty loose out of the box. So they tell you to like hold the fork here and then just kind of twist this thing to make it a little tighter. Smaller Allen wrench is gonna go ahead and be good for these guys. So just your basic stuff, guys. If you know how to put together a bike, you can always skip this. But usually individual companies and their bikes, they have little quirks. So sometimes it's good to watch how to set it up, right? This last one, kind of weird. It's almost like it was really tight but not threaded all the way in from the factory so hopefully that's not like reverse threaded and going to give us problems anyway forks you want to make sure are slightly curved to the front okay not seeing any like serration here on the handlebar so that could be a problem with these handlebars um, kind of sliding degree measurement here on the front see that little graphic there which kind of helps us to center it and stuff Everything is a little bit loose on the bar, so you can kind of bend them up how you want. You want to have the brakes towards the front, right? So we, and we can adjust this later on. Let's just get this thing mounted up. So I'm just going to kind of put this back on here how it was. There are a couple of washers, so you want to make sure you don't lose these washers that are on the bolts. See, that one really camouflaged into my floor, so don't want to lose those washers if they do fall off. And you want to make sure this head clamp, everything is even. The bite is evenly distributed, you know what I mean? Anyway, let's just get this snug so we can get it kind of uh, positioned. It's not going to rattle around too much, but it's still going to be slidable and movable. Now I can at least slide this left and right, up and down a little bit. Kind of rudimentary little... You know, just a basic generic bell. Mineral oil front and left brakes. I'm hoping by squeezing that, I didn't already close my brake up because um, I don't know if I see a spacer in there. No, shucks. Now, let me just go ahead and put this headlight on. So it looks like you just have one little connection here and you have a reflector that faces out. There's our LED headlight there. Nothing else here. This Hopefully this lights up. That's kind of cool on the back. Super simple. Just loosening this bolt. We got washers on each end and a nut on the back end. And then we just put the, uh, the light through. Very simple. Through the light and then through putting that nut on the back. Just going to kind of make it finger tight for now. So here's our little clamp for the wheel. It's one of those quick release, just like all, normally all of the other bikes have, where it's just kind of a bolt that quick releases. You don't have to take it all the way off, just loosen it. Looks like we have to unscrew this bolt fully and take this plastic spacer out. This was just like a plastic wheel spacer. Don't wanna lose these springs, right? Or else this whole thing won't work. So we have a spring from large to small on the inside and from large to small on the inside on that one. And then all this is, is a plastic spacer. You can throw that away. I'm just going to screw that on temporarily. This is where the wheel's going. Speaking of the wheel, here we go. And it's got some plastic protection on it. So we can take this off. This is basically trash or I guess you could use it for something else. You see that? Just a little plastic protection plug. And then there's a little plug on the other side too. It looks like it's pretty flat. See that? So we're going to have to pop this up. That's for sure. Take off that left side nut. We know we want the disc brake to be here. Slide in here, keeping the spring in place. 
on the other side, putting the spring on and just tighten the bolt a little bit. So I went ahead and got a little um, tool for vehicle body panels. I'm putting a new stereo in my 4Runner, new speakers actually, and I bought this to just pop up some of the plastic pieces. Shoving this guy in here. This bike is so light, I can just hold it up with one hand. So there we go. So I got it spaced out, and now just taking the wheel, simultaneously, you want to go on the axle and into the brake pads. Next step, cranking it down, just making sure everything's in. See how that uh, brake disc is in the two brake pads there. Tighten this thing down as much as you can, and so it kind of closes with quite a lot of force, but not enough force to like break anything. So that felt good right there. And I'm just gonna close it so that the lever is facing the back there. You know what I mean? So if it hits anything, the lever is not gonna open. Let's do a spin. Yeah, that's perfect. That's what you wanna see. It's just spinning on those bearings for the most part. But yeah, no suspension on this bike, guys. Definitely no suspension. So kind of interesting, this is the second bike I've done that has no literature at all on um, the fenders. Loosen up this smaller bolt that's more on the bottom that looks like that's where the, the fender brace goes. Slide through the brace. Pretty self-explanatory. Screw that thing on. It's funny how there's no literature on this. This is like the second or third bike I've put together where there's just nothing about how to put the fenders on. And that's, that's it for the rear fender. Just want to make sure it spins okay. Yeah. Boy, I can tell that belt drive is going to be nice and quiet. Just maybe a one speed, I guess. I don't see any way this thing's going to shift gears, that's for sure. All right, guys, so putting on that little um, rear tail light, remember? All I'm doing is wrapping this thing around and clipping it on. Just like this. There we go. Turning on. A little added security. I'm just going to put it all the way to the top. So I want to put on this front fender. I'm going to put it on kind of loose and just make sure these all kind of screw in and fit together. It's always a good idea to kind of lose every, leave everything slightly loose until you kind of get everything where you know it's working and then tighten everything up. I still just can't believe how long these screws are just for this little fender brace. So probably the second hardest thing to figure out is where to put this fender, either on the back or the front. So anyway, I'm gonna put the fender brace on the front and then just kind of screw it in on the back. Probably wanna leave a little bit of slack to slide the fender brace up and down. See where that likes to kind of live there. And let's see if this is possible to tighten this up or if we might actually need another wrench or another screwdriver. Let's just see if this whole thing kind of grabs on its own. See how that front one is spinning there. So here's a multi-tool from another bike I got. They included it in the box. I think it was one of those, um, it was either a him away or something like that. But anyway, I needed a tool to hold that while I bolt this down in the back. If you guys are listening over here at 10 Ways, um, give a little multi-tool like this, that'd be great. I mean, these, are, these things are kind of normal with these kind of bikes now. They include in the box. So you see how that's just gonna kind of fall away here. You're gonna have to tighten this down a little bit tighter. Unfortunately, they don't give you a wrench, guys, that can tighten this little Allen here. So again, 10 ways if you're listening. There we go. Um, put in one of these multi-tools in your packs. Guess what, we gotta put these on, and this is a little weird because uh, this doesn't really match up. You see how the holes don't match up here? So this is where you're either going to have to adjust um, this guy here, which again, they do not give you the proper wrench for. So I just want to see if I can slide this possibly down a little bit. Yeah. So see how that slides? That's given me like a few inches of slide there. So I'm going to leave that loose and then go ahead and attach it here and then tighten that back up. Just wanna make sure I have the access to the screw on the outside. They give you wrenches for some, but not all. And again, be careful. I already scratched the green a little bit. There's a little shiny metal coming through that flat green. That's unfortunate, and that was just from me using 
that tool and scratching that. So be very careful when you're putting these things on. Get the brace all the way tight and then tighten each one of these down. And that's gonna suck it in as much as it can on the back. And then the only other thing I can do, guys, is pretty much just bend these out a little bit. So what you might have to do is kind of bend it a little on each side, just so you kind of get your fender lined up. This one I want to push down just a little while I'm tightening this. I get that rear part of the fender centered. The only thing I'm a little worried about is this right here. This is not really centered on the wheel. Actually, just when I loosened it, it got really nice and centered. So now I'm gonna tighten this back up slowly. This might be good to have a second person and just hold this fender as straight as possible on the tire while they tighten. All right, good enough on the fender guard. That looks like that's gonna be good enough. You know, it's a little higher on the back here than the front, but the tire's not hitting at all and uh, the fender's not hitting the frame at all. All right guys, last but not least, we need to make sure that the steering is centered. The head right here is a little crooked to the left. I wanna make sure that um, this is all straight as possible. So that looks pretty good. Once you got that, there's these head column bolts. They're actually kind of loose out of the box. They do give the wrench for this, so that's good. So those seem pretty tight. Just for good measure, I'm gonna make sure that one's tight. I'm gonna tilt them a little more forward. You want it to be comfortable when you're grabbing the brakes and you wanna have make sure your arms can be pretty straightened out and resting on it. So now that I really have everything kind of adjusted for my height and everything, now I can give these guys a good little crank and make sure um, the bars aren't gonna move while I'm riding. All right guys, last two things before we ride is we gotta pump the tires up with there because they're flat and also charge this thing and check this out. Here is where the charge port is. So if you see that, it's just a little kind of waterproof uh, plastic thing here that kind of pops down. So that plugs in there, leave it on the wall. It's probably gonna take a few hours to charge. I'm gonna pump up the tires hopefully they give us a recommended PSI. All right, so on the back here, before you go, it says inflate to tire presser 50 to 75 PSI. All right, guys, we are set up. The pump it comes with, I'd recommend definitely have your own bicycle pump. I have a little bit bigger one here for my bikes and stuff um, because pumping this thing up to 50 to 75 pounds with this tiny little pump is gonna take you a long time. So I switched to my other pump. Another thing too is it seems like this um, waterproof port here kind of falls out kind of easy. So you might wanna keep track of that. If you're gonna go through any like water and stuff, make sure that's sealed up, good. So I just plugged in and now it's blinking red and green. There we go, okay. It was just flashing red and green. Now it went red, perfectly red here. You know, let it charge for a while till it turns green, and then we'll go outside and take this thing for its first test run. Okay guys, well, just got it off the charger. It seemed to take about maybe four hours, three to four hours to charge. The light turned green on the charger. So from red to green uh, means it's all good to go. So anyway, here's how the bike looks. Of course, I didn't get a kickstand, but I did check out the 10 Ways website just to see what's up because I've had this for about a month or so before I'm reviewing it. And it seems like um, actually they're including a free kickstand. So I guess initially they weren't, but they're including that now if you if you buy it. Then they have another couple of optional accessories. But anyway, here's how the bike looks all assembled. Finally got it out here in the daylight. You know, pretty cool looking bike. Again, they have uh, the green looks pretty cool. I went ahead and just pumped the tires to a maximum of I think I did 60 pounds. It says it can go up to 75, but you know, the harder you pump them, higher up you pump them, the more of a um, harsh ride you're gonna have. So let's first turn on this menu here. I wanna look at the menu before we start to ride. So actually it has some protective coating. I'm gonna go ahead and take that off for the first ride. And this is the power and this is the menu. And then it has this up and down button here. So that's the only buttons you have on this whole thing. So holding power, and there we go. So we got a little boot up screen here. And then this does have a passcode if you wanted to set a passcode. 
You can use the arrows from the factory. It just comes with all zeros. So let's just try to hit menu all the way across. There we go. So you just tap it like three or four times and you get through. We got 100% battery there, zero kilometers per hour. I would like to change that to mile per hour if I could. And then here's the assist, power assist, PAS. And it looks like that's the trip. So 0 0.4 kilometers right in the middle there. That's small number. So the power assist will be with this up and down button here. See how it's changing from zero to one to two to three. So you got three maximum. But if you press and hold it, the top button, let me see the light's supposed to come on. Yep. So there's our headlight there. It looks bright enough. Maybe I'll do a quick little clip at night to show you guys how that headlight is at night. So stand by and wait till the end and I'll probably put it in a little night clip for you. Anyway, and then you want to turn it back off. You just hold the same button and let's see if it goes off. Yep. You know, some of the other e-bikes, they have a little throttle over here. This one doesn't have that and it doesn't have any gears. Remember, this is just a single speed bike and you can adjust um, just adjust the assist, but if I do press this and hold the bottom button, yeah, look at that. It goes into assist mode. Let me see if I can click and hold the menu button what happens. Here we go. So here's the settings. And it looks like you're just going to go up and down with the thumb. There we go. Unit is what I want. Let's see if we hit tap menu again. There we go. Okay, so you tap menu to get into it. I want mile per hour. That's quick and easy to get in there. There we go. And then go back, you have to go up to exit. Boom. This stuff is not in the manual at all. Set your password. Remember it was just all zeros to start off with. So I can change that here. You can actually have the password on or off if you want. It seems like somebody could basically just ride it like a regular bike. So that's not really that useful. Um, but they won't just won't be able to use the electrification. All right, so let's get this thing going on a ride. I'm just gonna put my drone up real quick as a chase cam. Okay guys, what do you say we give this thing a whirl? This is the Mini 3 Pro drone again. Seems to be really solid on here. So if you guys ever wanna put the Mini 3 with the controller with the screen on your bike, so this is just the Mini 3 Pro. This will be a great test for you guys that are into drones to see if this thing can, you know, actually track a bicycle and how well it does. So I'm just gonna draw a box around myself here. Active track, and we're just gonna do trace. So it's just gonna kind of turn its head and trace us. I'm just hoping this drone can track. Oh man, this is awesome with the controller on the steering stem. Absolutely fantastic. Remember my left brake here is my front, my right is my rear. And that drone's gonna avoid obstacles, so this is great. Awesome. I did an initial with just holding the controller and that didn't work. I had to go back up my driveway and attach this thing, turned around at the bottom. So far the bike, I mean, handling a little bit of gravel, you know, this isn't deep gravel, it's just my gravel driveway here. But it feels pretty solid. I'm thinking my seat is pretty good. We'll get on the flat here and then we'll figure out if I have to adjust the seat. But uh, so just with no assistance, this is zero and there's no speeds on this, remember? So this is one speed here. Yeah, so that's getting a little tough up here. I'm gonna kick it into first speed assistance. Yeah, I just felt it kick in, feels great. I'm feeling that assistance come in here. Just got my little drone bag on my back here, just in case I need to change the batteries um, in mid-flight or something while we're tracking. So let's try this out, guys. Um, I'll have a couple different cameras going, you know. I got a camera on the bike too, so I'll be trying to get a couple of different views of the way the bike is on the road. So we're just gonna be going downhill for a while, and what I'm noticing is yeah i think that seat's just about right what i'm noticing guys is this um bike is really smooth let's just do a couple of swerves here see if the drone can follow us but 
I'm noticing it's really smooth. I think Tenway's actually got one of the pro skaters or ice skaters or something to test this bike out as well. And she's actually up on their website saying, yeah, it feels like you're just gliding on ice. And it does actually feel really smooth with this belt drive. Fantastic so far. Let's get up a little bit more speed here. Now I just have this drone following me, so I'm not sure I want to do a POI because this doesn't have any side sensors. It's just probably going to hit a tree, right, with the Mini 3 Pro. Hopefully with the Mini 4, maybe we'll have side sensors, right, guys? So we get that full 360 with the Mini. I'm going to go a little faster. I'm looking at the speedometer. We're going 15, 16. See if this drone can keep up with us, 17. It's a little bumpy here, putting on a couple of both brakes actually. No suspension on the bike, so when you hit bumps, it doesn't feel great. <laughs> the seat isn't super padded, okay? So I'm feeling a little bit of the bumps on my butt bone here, but ooh, going too fast for the drone. Let's slow down a little bit. Let this drone kind of catch up. I might actually want to pick the drone up. So I'm going to push up a little bit. Uh-oh. Hearing some brake noise. No big deal. We'll just keep going, okay? So I'm only on assist one. And I can feel it kicking in. That's doing good. Let's see how one-handed riding is. You know, when you have really short handlebars and you're up on the bike like this, um, it does feel a little bit weird when you have only one hand on it, but I'm able to do it. Yeah, I can feel that it kicking in. Let's try speed two. Oh yeah, so that kicks in, it's noticeable difference there. Let's try speed three, just pressing that up arrow. Speed three, or assist three, I should say. And this is the maximum assistance. There is a slight lag when you start pedaling on the assistance. You know what I mean? So it's just gonna lag in a little bit. Anyway guys, just coming around the subdivision here. I'm in the Southwest and you know, holiday season, it starts to get cold, but We've, we're having a really nice week of sunny weather here. Just letting this thing glide. I'm gonna see how fast 20, see if that drone can keep up. 25, 26. Yeah, let's slow down so that drone, oh, it lost us. Okay, I'm gonna have to turn around. All right, speed three. Let's see how it is up the hill. <laughs> yep, my Skydio, by the way, I don't know if I mentioned this. All right, let's stop right here. Retrack, it's like way above me. There you go, active track, trace, go. All right, let's see what it does going uphill. The assistance is kicking on. Okay, I can feel it. Just trying to help me get started. That's cool. Is it gonna stay in front of me? Well, that's kind of cool, okay. I didn't think the Mini, I guess they updated it. Now the Mini 3 guys Pro can track going backwards. All right. Hopefully it doesn't hit anything. It's supposed to have sensors on the back. Anyway, I think that's a good angle. Geez, there's trees there, buddy. Don't hit them. <laughs> yeah, it's stopping for the trees, and let's see. All right, cool. Well, that's kind of interesting. These are things that you drone guys are going to be interested in, too, while we're testing this thing out. So I'm on Speed Assist 3, or Pedal Assist 3, I should say, and it's making me work. But it's making it a little bit easier to pedal, that's for sure. Yeah, and it seems like the harder I pedal, 
unlike other bikes, the more it kicks in. So I'm pedaling very softly. It's barely even assisting me. If I start to really pedal hard, I can really feel that assistance kick in. So it's kind of linear. Uh-oh, losing drone again. Ah, oh, you sucker. Are you gonna come back? Yeah. <laughs> yep, drone issues again, guys, right? There it is. It should see me, there it is. Yeah, see, so what this drone does is it just completely stops tracking and then you gotta come back. All right, buddy, come on, keep tracking me. Anyway, what I was talking about with the Skydio guys is it's malfunctioned. It overheats and the gimbal, and this is only from the last update on the Skydio 2 drone. Remember I used that for a lot of my activity reviews like this, tracking. Great drone when it works, but it has stopped working. It overheats and the gimbal just goes limp and it can't do anything. You just need to land immediately. So I've only had about 10 to 15 flights on it, you know? So that's kind of lame that that happened. I'm kind of going through the RMA process with the Skydio company to figure this out, but you gotta pay 150 bucks no matter what for them to even look at it. If it ends up costing you 800 bucks and you might as well buy a new drone, they're still gonna charge you the 150. But if you do fix it with them, at least you can uh, put the 150 towards the fixing fee, you know? Anyway, getting back to the bike. So far for a no suspension bike with a belt drive, and no speeds it's basic but it's doing great very smooth anyway very basic remember we got our bell a basic bell not a very good bell but at least it works okay don't get lost around the trees mini <laughs> there we go so i'm still on assist three and remember this thing doesn't have a huge battery. It's got that battery in the stem or in the frame, I should say, which is all integrated. You can't remove it. It's avoiding really good. So they've improved the A-pass and all that stuff on this drone. So I'm digging it. I am digging it, guys. We're getting some cool angles with the frontal track. It's a little bit um, going kind of back and forth. It's getting closer and farther away. So we can see that the back avoidance is not as fast, responding as fast as the frontal. But I can just look down at my screen here once in a while and see if it's you know keeping me in view. That's great. And I got both my hands on the handlebars. No need to worry about it. Of course, until, um, see what it does here. Whoa, it's going way back there. Don't go too sideways, buddy. Wow, now it's deciding to track me in the rear, okay? So you see that? And it seems like it won't get out of this rear tracking until you put it back in front of you. Brakes work good on the bike. I'm just holding both of them. Nice, solid little stop. And now it's up to 94% on the readout, 93, 94. And that just happened right when I squeezed the brake really hard. So who knows, man, maybe it does have some regen. I'm gonna move this thing back to the front, the drone actually. Still in uh, assist three guys, 94% on the bike from 88 going up the hill. See how this thing does. Yeah, it's going through the trees. Interesting. All right, it's one back around to the back. So I'm not gonna mess with it anymore. We'll just let it follow from the back. I think that following the front it through isn't really a feature. It just does it until it needs to turn. At least with ops, whoops. 
And there goes my other cam. <laughs> wow, that thing keep, kept tracking me while I spun right around. Yeah, this bugger's got kind of toasted. Remember, this isn't really a drone review, but I like to do multiple scenarios since my, my channel is, since I do so many drones on it, since I do so many drone reviews and like to use the drones for this kind of stuff. It seems like they improved it, guys, the Mini 3 Pro. Because they had no problem tracking me when I spun around on the road there. Okay, having this weird, this weird brake thing, when I let off the brakes, sometimes the front wants to have that weird sound, okay? But it just goes away when you hit the front of the brake again. I just put the front brake on hard and slowed down just to kind of test it. All right, well, let's speed around this corner. Let's see how standing up is on this thing. Seems like that brake noise comes back if it sits for a while. You hear that? So that's like a front brake ghost rub. I'm not even touching the brakes right now. Now I'm touching the brakes again. So maybe a little bit of a negative. There it is, it's back again. I like tap the front brake for it to go away. So that could be a little con. So we're gonna hang it right here at this stop sign. Go up this hill. Now this is not a um, easy hill, especially on a bike. Uh oh, you hear that brake ghost rub? That's not good. So we're on, we're on assist three and man, I gotta stand up and really pedal hard on this. What do we got left on the drone? What's our battery? 39%, I better hurry the heck up. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Up another hill. 60 mile per hour up the hill. Yeah, I feel the legs burning for sure. Keep following me, drone. We're almost done. Oh boy, yeah, that burnt. I think that was the hardest hill. Oh. <laughs> Out of shape, guys, sorry. All right, here we go. Let's get some speed here. So we can get up this other hill. Fantastic though, it's doing good. It just doesn't have, whew. it does not have the assist that other bikes might have with bigger batteries, okay? 83%, whew, so dogs there. Luckily they're fenced up. <clears throat> Okay, we need to get home because this drone is almost out of batteries and I think that'll do it for this review. But I just want you guys to know how it is on hills. And you're gonna have to work. Whoop, come on drone. It saw that power line and just out of safety it stopped. So far so good though, you just can't get the angles that you can with the Skydio, unless you're more manual with it. I'm, I'm actually pretty impressed with the Mini 3 Pro after they updated it. So doing good, it just can't follow from very far, much farther away than this. It needs to keep the image tracking in place. Now we're going down a pretty good slope, that hill we just came up, Whew, out of breath. So this is the hill we just got up and you know this is around i want to say about 20 percent trees are looking really nice we'll take a left here and go home 
Now this is the extended range battery on this drone, the Mini 3 Pro. Guys, if you want to see all the videos on this drone, um, unboxing, initial flight test review, before the updates that I was talking about, and then I did a range test. I'm gonna do a couple more range tests. Go ahead and check out, the link will pop up here. Also be down there, down in the description check out what's all about this drone it seems to be doing really good better than expected now that my skydio 2 is out of commission Woo. okay we're assist three i'm really having to pedal hard so not much assist on this bike guys it's got a little but not a whole lot especially up hills when it flattens out no problem I kind of want to see if we can move this thing while I'm pedaling. I want to move this drone. Let's see what we do here. Move it to the side. Whoa! Not a good idea. Get through the trees, buddy. Get through the trees. Oh, shoot. Shouldn't have done that. And that's where... That's where this drone fails to perform like the Skydio 2. Okay? I just cannot do it. So let's go up. Here's a good test. Will it hit trees if you go straight up? Yep. <laughs> Dang it. Just crashed my Mini 3 Pro. Son of a gun. So that's what I was wondering, is if the thing would crash if you just um, go straight up. It can see some trees, but maybe not when it's tracking. All right, well, you saw it here, never fails. Crashing drones. Yeah, the propellers just hit. Oh boy, we got a cracked one here. Yeah, this one, the tip, look at that. The whole orange tip is off. I'm gonna turn this off start it back up and see if it'll fly home. A little bit of damage here on the panel, it popped out. Just as I was talking the Mini 3 Pro up on tracking, I had that crash. At least no arms broke. We just had this interesting panel pop out right here. Let's see if we can snap that back in and then we'll just try to boot her back up. Looks like the gimbal and camera are fine. So remember guys, going up with the Mini 3 Pro will not avoid branches. All right, let's try to boot this thing up again. Yeah, it still started up. Let's see if it relinks to the controller. Oh, check it out. We have an error 25 on the bike. Okay, see that guys? Error 25 on the bike. So I'm gonna power off and power back on. Oh, error 25. Okay, well, we're finding you know, problems with the bike. Okay, it went away when I just started pushing up for my assist, but it stayed on when I rebooted. That was weird. There we go, we're gonna, oh, error 25 again. What's the problem, 10 ways? Okay, finding the problems as usual. So that's a big con. Let me shut it down, let it sit there for a minute. Let's launch our drone up. See how it flies with cracked propellers and everything. Unbelievable. That's fantastic. Let's go ahead and just keep going. We got 17% left on the drone. All right. Still flying fine. Battery low, we'll just go until this thing lands. And there you go, you can crash a Mini 3, snap propellers. It's given me video like nothing happened. That's fantastic. Bike seems to be back to normal. There's no more error on the screen. A squirrel! Squirrel! <laughs> what are the odds of that? Okay, assist is working. No prob. It looks like the sensors are working on the drone still to avoid stuff. That's great. 13% on the drone. Let's go, let's go. Let's power it. Uh-oh, low battery landing. Okay, it's gonna force a land, I think. 
Let's just see what happens. Yep, it's gonna land right there in the road. Okay, well that's good to know. At about 8%, it's gonna land. Man, I wish I got a kickstand with this bike. Man, even with a snapped propeller, look at that. And the other one is this, uh, yeah, this orange part, the rubber on the tip is coming off. That snapped off like a quarter of the propeller. And look at this one too is gone, the whole uh, orange tip and this thing still flies like a charm. Always finding the extreme use case scenarios, right? And we found the cons on this bike and I'll be going back into that when we uh, get back home. So you see this again? It seems like when the bike just sits there, that air is flashing. Maybe that doesn't mean much, but let's just try to keep going. Yeah, I've got no assist again, guys. That sucks. Pressing up and down on the arrow and the assist comes back to get rid of that error. Okay. Let's see how it does in these trees. A little bit of assist going uphill, not much. Remember, I'm on assist three and it's still pretty hard to pedal. Man, I can't believe the drone is still working. Amazing. Two for one in this one, guys. Mini 3 tracking and how good this bike works. All in one review. All right, let's get this bike. We're back at the homestead. So let's get this bike situated here. Since I don't have a kickstand, gotta lean it on this barrel. There we go. Pushing down on the sticks. Okay, so I've gone 5.2 miles. We kind of covered that they do now include a free kickstand. The seat is not very comfortable. It's a kind of a hard seat, so you're not gonna get that much comfort. You know, it's fine for, you know, around the street if you're not doing super long trips, but I could see if you're doing a long, long ride, your butt's maybe gonna kind of get a little bit sore just because the seat is on the kind of harder side. There's no actual connection to the rear brake light, remember? We have to turn this thing on right here on the top to have the light, the rear light work. And it just stays on, so there's no flashing or anything that I can see. And you have to charge this, remember, with that USB charger. So that's kind of a con there. The front fender was not very easy to get on, and there was no instructions on how to put that on. So that's kind of the thing with these bikes is if there is a front fender, from what I've seen is there's no instructions usually. Another con was that Error 25 didn't seem to really do much because when you press up, it kind of goes away. You know, and that was mountainous down and uphill riding. If we went about five miles and used 20%, and there's five 20s and 100, if you multiply five miles by five, then we're getting 25 miles. So that's great. I mean, just from this little built-in battery, not complaining about that. That seems fine. Seems like they chose to use kind of a cheesy bell. I like to see those bells that actually click in and have a really loud ding to them, but this is just one of those like spring-loaded, you know, sideways kind of hitting bells. So they could upgrade that. The only other thing that was kind of a con on this thing was the brake pads having that kind of ghost sound. And that started to happen more and more. It doesn't have an entirely large amount of pedal assist power going up hills. It's great how it has kind of a linear pedal assist, which is better than a lot of the other um, electric bikes that I've been testing. I really like how it comes on stronger the harder you pedal. You know what I mean? And then if you're really light, you can just barely feel that assist, but then you go on strong again and it comes right back to help you. A lot of other bikes, as soon as you start your pedal, it kicks on full blast on whatever setting you have. A big pro on this thing, of course, is the belt drive. So this belt drive is phenomenal, super smooth, and that's probably one of the reasons you'd wanna buy this bike is because of the belt drive. Since there is no suspension whatsoever, don't think this is gonna be an off-road bike. It can handle some gravel, maybe some short, really short off-road sessions and just regular dirt. But once you start getting in rocks and stuff, I would not even, try to do do it with this bike or else you're probably going to damage it for what we did on this test it worked completely fine as far as 
The roads and terrain, aside from that little thing I was talking about where the uphill power isn't that great, but this is meant for cities, right? This is a city bike. So you mainly have flat surfaces, maybe slightly inclined surfaces in cities, getting over sidewalk transitions, you know, crosswalks, roadways, totally fine. And that's kind of what this one is built for. So, you know, if you live in the city, you might want to check this out. Looks like you're going to get effectively around 20, 25 miles on the bike, just from doing the math. I guess you could say another con, and it's not really a super con, is there's no shifter, there's no gears, right? And I think that's the sacrifice you make for having a belt drive. It'd be really hard to have that belt switch over. It may be a while until they figure out how to, you know, shift with these types of belts. For what it is, a one-speed bike, a city bike, it did pretty well. I kind of push them a little bit more than they usually can handle with their capacity on, on these bikes. Like if it's an off-road, all-terrain bike, I'll really bring it in the trails back here behind my house and just get in the rocks, get in the ledges and stuff and really see if, if things you know, happen. Some of the other bikes I, I test, the shocks kind of blow out and start leaking, you know, stuff like that. For what it is, a pretty good bike, Aside from those couple of pros and cons I kind of talked about. Now the Mini 3 Pro Warrior that we use to shoot some of the video is another story. I have a bunch of videos on this. Go ahead and check it out. I'll have the link pop up there for the series on this Mini 3 Pro. But look at this thing, man. It's a workhorse. I can't say that for the longevity of the Skydio 2. I've had plenty of DJIs. They've never, the hardware has never failed me. 10 to 15 flights on the Skydio 2 and it doesn't work anymore. Anyway, guys, I hope you liked the review of the 10 ways in part with the Mini 3 Pro tracking. That was informative to you. I had a blast doing it. And don't forget to subscribe. And everything I review here is it, that's in my reviews, including the gear I use to film, is down there in the description. So you can check out the bike, check out the drone, check out everything I use to film my videos. And I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.